Hi. In this fourth video, we're going to take a look at another example of a contour integral. This time, we're going to be integrating the function z squared with respect to z, and we're going to be doing it along the path c that consists of this line segment on the real axis from negative 3 to positive 3, and the semicircle that sits on top of that. Now, we haven't been given a parameterization for this uh, curve, or even a, a direction, but because we have the uh, the integral symbol with a circle that's unmarked by any arrows, we know that we should assume the default orientation, which means that we'll be imagining walking along this path with the interior located to our left. And so the direction you would assume for this uh, curve is that direction. This is the positive orientation. Now as we get started, we're going to do the same thing for this example that we did in the example in the last video. We're going to break our, our path up into two portions. We'll let C be the, C1 be the uh, portion that travels along the real axis, and C2 will be the semicircular portion. We know that the, uh, the integral of uh, z squared along the entire contour will just be the sum of the integrals along these two uh, partial contours. Now for each of these individual integrals, we're going to do uh, that trick we talked about in the last video. We're going to come up with a parameterization, and we're going to plug that parameterization in for z, and then replace dz by z prime of t dt. Now along the, uh, the first portion of the journey, c1, which is this line segment, perhaps the easiest parameterization is just to let z equal t, and let t run from negative 3 to positive 3. That will trace out these uh, real values along the real axis. Now once we do that, we're going to plug t in for z. Uh, z prime of t dt just becomes regular old dt. So we get a very simple integral. We'll take the, uh, the antiderivative and plug in the endpoints, as the fundamental theorem of calculus says we should do. And we'll get 18 as the uh, value of the integral along this portion of the, uh, the path. Now we'll do something similar for the uh, second leg of the journey. We're going to parameterize the semicircular curve. We're going to do that using the exponential form. If you want to, you could also just write this as, as 3 cosine of uh, t plus i times 3 sine of t. It ends up being the, uh, the same thing. Now when I put that in, and I put in z prime of t dt, I'll get an integral that looks something like this. And I can use my properties of integrals and exponential functions to rewrite it as 27i times the integral of e to the 3it dt. Now, I know how to take an integral when I, the function is split into real and imaginary parts. So I'm going to next do that. I'm going to take the uh, exponential form and write it out as polar form so that I can see the real and imaginary parts. Um, I'm going to multiply 27i through and, uh, and take those integrals of the real part and of the imaginary part separately. Now again, these are fairly simple antiderivatives. I can just uh, take those antiderivatives plug the endpoints in, and evaluate, you'll see that the uh, second part here actually evaluates to zero. So there's no imaginary part to our output. The output is just the contribution from the first part, which ends up being minus 18. Now that I've found the value of the integral along those two portions of the path, I can compute the value along the entire contour by adding the values. We'll add the 18 and the minus 18, and we'll end up with a zero. Now that's kind of interesting. That's, that's our answer. But it makes you recall something. In multivariable calculus, you probably talked a lot about certain types of integrals along clothes paths. It's always uh, evaluating to zero. And since we were evaluating along a closed path here, you might ask, under what conditions will an integral around a closed path yield zero? Was it a coincidence? Or is there something special about this path, or perhaps about the function z squared, that makes it inevitable that the value will be zero? Now these and other questions will be answered as we start the next section where we introduce the cauchy gorsuch theorem. Should be fun. Now in the next video, the last video of our sequence here, we'll talk about how to estimate or approximate uh, the value of an integral, or how to determine an upper bound for the, uh, the modulus of our integral. See you then.